Let's determine the moment of inertia of a big wheel. Here we have a big wheel, and on the side it's, it's attached here at the center, and uh, there's a string going around here, and uh, on that string is a little mass hanging. And uh, our disk here has a radius r, and um, we now want to know, in a little experiment, um, what, what the moment of inertia is of this disk. And what we have to do is we have to drop this mass to the ground. And uh, we need to measure what the height is here. And we need to measure how long it takes to, to drop. So we need to measure t. So how we're going to go about that? Well, if moment of inertia, that probably has something to do with the torque of this wheel, so we have to start doing a torque analysis. So torque about the center of mass equals uh, moment of inertia about the center of mass times the angular acceleration. And uh, we need to recall that the torque is uh, the product of the radius times the perpendicular force. So we're going to have r here, and then uh, the force that's, that's acting on this wheel here is actually this tension force here. So we, we're going to have RT here. And um, now uh, we need to look at how, how things are actually moving with respect to a coordinate system. So if I pull or if I let this mass drop, the disk is going to spin clockwise. So we're going to have a theta hat going this way. And if theta hat is going clockwise, my k hat vector is going to go into the board. And if k hat is going to go there, well then, and, and, and it's rotating clockwise, the angular acceleration is going to uh, go in the k hat direction. And if that is the case, then our torque is going to follow suit. So torque also goes into the, into the board. And so that means here we're going to deal with the k hat direction, and we're going to have i, c, m, and then alpha, z in the k hat direction. OK, so we can solve this for i, r, t over alpha, z. OK, well, that's uh, pretty good. But we have two unknowns in here, the t and the alpha, z. And we can use some other concepts to actually get information on those. The t, as you can guess already, plays a role here in this massless string. So we can do a quick uh, free body uh, diagram and uh, an f equals ma analysis to get, uh, uh, to get to that tension force. So we have our little mass m here. Gravity is acting on it. Um, and we have this tension force here, and we're going to put j hat down. So we're going to get mg minus t equals ma. It's only going to go in the, in the y, y direction, so we can just leave it here. We can do this. Uh, we can solve this for t, and then we have um, mg uh, minus a. OK, good. So we have that. Now about the angular acceleration. And whenever there is a string going around a disk, then we, of course, have a constraint condition um, because the linear acceleration of uh, this little mass going down is related to the radius of the disk times the angular acceleration. So we can solve this for alpha, and then we have a over r. Uh, so let's put that in here. r, then we have m g minus a over a, and then we get another r here. And we can write that just a little bit more compact, m r squared g over a minus 1. Good. So now we have one last uh, hurdle, namely that a here. 
that a, uh, we can't measure. I said in the beginning we want to make an experiment. Actually, we need that experiment because we can't, uh, we can't otherwise get to this A. So what we need is a relation that, that uh, connects um, what we can measure, which is the time. It falls down this height here to the acceleration of this block. And of course, that comes from one-dimensional kinematics. And uh, we know that h equals 1 half a t squared. So we can uh, solve that for a uh, 2 h over t squared. And uh, now we can stick that in here. And we have m r squared and uh, g t squared over 2h minus 1. And let's just write this here again. And that is our final solution. So now we have only measurable quantities here. The t we can measure. We just need a stopwatch. And uh, the h we can measure as well. And uh, this actually already resembles uh, if you know uh, the theoretical, um, this already resembles the theoretical solution, which of course is uh, for a disk, one half m r squared. So that's uh, what one expects for a disk, and you see that, you know, we are very close. So this term here is probably something like 1.5, or should better come out to be 1.5, because if we subtract 1, we get to that half here. And you can use it to, in, retu in return, you can also use it to uh, predict the time it takes to fall down if you know what the height is or, or vice versa.